In Arizona, many of our surface water drainages flow in response to rainfall. Collecting samples from these drainages can be difficult given the flashy nature of our summer monsoons. Commercial auto samplers can be coupled with environmental sensors to facilitate collection of stormwater samples in remote locations. This works great for collecting water quality parameters that are conservative, such as metals, but what if we want to sample for more time-sensitive parameters like E. coli? In this case, we can couple our auto samplers with the remote environmental monitor described in Chapter 6. This gives us the capability of remotely detecting when there's flow in a channel, but more importantly, know if an auto sampler program is executed and whether samples have been collected. This helps us respond more efficiently to field conditions, collect our time-sensitive samples within holding time, and avoids wasted trips to the field. Our homebrew REMS also give us the ability to take advantage of integrating Arduinos with more sophisticated hardware like RockLock modems. These modems give us the ability to access the Iridium satellite network. For remote monitoring, this means we're no longer limited to deploying in areas with cellular reception. As long as we have good visibility of the sky, we can monitor field conditions from anywhere on the face of the Earth. At the time of this writing, there is no such commercial option offered by Hawk or ISCO for their auto samplers, but given how relatively easy it is to integrate these modems, I suspect that will soon change. This is particularly helpful in Arizona, where many of our monitoring sites may be very remote, difficult to get to, and far away from any cellular coverage. To detect flow in the channel, we can couple our auto samplers and REMs with the customizable flow detection hardware described in Chapters 2 and Chapters 8 of this series. The following slides will summarize a template for realizing a field installation of this hardware. In a later chapter, I'll share code that pulls all this hardware together for both satellite and cellular-based REMs. But for now, let's begin with a general overview of what our field setup looks like. Here you can see that we have our sensor and auto sampler tubing deployed in the Thalweg of our channel. And here's an example of the same from one of our field monitoring sites. As a side note, the cup of water you see in the picture here will be used later to test the system after installation and wiring. We also have our auto sampler. In this case, my agency uses the Hawk AS950. And we also have our signal wires encased in a rodent-proof sleeve and conduit, which will be buried in a shallow trench with the goal of avoiding having cattle or ranchers trip or snare the same. And this photo shows the sensor wire coming in from the channel where it eventually will combine with the Hawk multipurpose half cable hooked up to our auto sampler. For our sensor in the channel, we use common thermostat signal wire. And here you can see that thermostat wire emerging from conduit that will be attached to a watertight fitting at the base of our REM. When attaching wires to your sensor, Make sure to map what colors go where relative to your microcontroller. And for the auto sampler signal cable, we'll use a Hawk Sigma multipurpose half cable. These fairly simple cables can be relatively expensive, so you may consider engineering your own if you have the time and the skill. The half cable is helpful for hooking up our REM to the auxiliary connector on our auto sampler, shown here. We'll use the half cable to tie the Arduino to the common ground on the auto sampler, which is the blue lead on the half cable, the auxiliary control input, which is the black lead, and the program complete output, which is the green lead. And this is just a close-up of that half cable showing the respective wires and their significance. We'll use the half cable to tie the Arduino to the common ground on the auto sampler, which is the blue lead on the half cable, the auxiliary control input, which is the black lead, and the program complete output, which is the green lead. 
All these wires will be fed into the rim through conduit that is attached to a watertight fitting at the base of the box. And here's our rim waiting to receive its signal wires. If you cut the end of the auto sampler half cable to shorten it or for any other reason, you want to make sure that you strip and tin the wires so that they insert nicely into the terminal block, whether that be one that came with your microcontroller or one you made yourself. This is going to make inserting the wires into the terminal blocks much easier when you're in the field. Again, you'll want to make sure you bring some kind of a wiring map for your cable so that you can attach wires to your microcontroller appropriately when in the field. If you don't do this ahead of time, plan on spending a nice chunk of the afternoon trying to debug your setup when your preliminary field tests fail. I'll close this section by showing you a couple of views of the sensor, auto sampler, and tubing, starting with the view looking up from the sensor towards the auto sampler. and ending with the view from your auto sampler to your REM. Next, I'll summarize the flow of our Arduino sketch that's going to drive all this hardware, details of which will be shared in another video. To make this easier to follow, I've erased all the wiring elements in our template and we'll bring them back in as they materialize through the program flow. Let's start by attaching an interrupt pin to our sensor in the Thalweg of our channel. An interrupt pin is useful because when it detects a change in voltage from the presence of water, it can stop whatever delays are taking place in order to execute an interrupt function, such as triggering the auto sampler to pull a sample, or setting a variable to a state that will prompt the REM to send a satellite message to the Internet of Things immediately. Let's assume this happens. We witness flow in the Thalweg and the interrupt pin is pulled high. The interrupt function in the code, which I'll share in the next video, is called program begin. This function pulls a pin on the Arduino known as program trigger to a low state. The program trigger pin is tied to the auxiliary control input pin on the auto sampler via the half cable. In the case of the Hawk AS950, when the auxiliary input is pulled low, the auto sampler will start to run its sampling program. At the same time, the REM will send out notice to the Internet of Things that the auto sampler program has been triggered, and the auto sampler starts its sampling routine. The bottles in our auto sampler will then fill according to its own internal program. And eventually the auto sampler program completes. While all this is going on, the Arduino sketch is polling the state of the program complete pin on the auto sampler about once every 60 seconds. Once the auto sampler program is complete, the auto sampler will pull its own program complete pin low for 90 seconds. This state is detected by another pin on the Arduino via the green wire attached to the REM. However, for this to work, you'll want to make sure to set the polling interval in your sketch to one minute or less. This will ensure the signal that's transmitted by the auto sampler is not missed by the Arduino in our REM. When that low signal is detected, the REM will know the auto sampler program is concluded and respond by sending out a message to the Internet of Things. If you've set up your IoT account to send out a tweet or a text, you will know immediately that your sample is now waiting to be collected and the auto sampler is waiting to be serviced. Okay, it's December 18th and we're at our next sampling site. Um, there's our water detector. And this time we're going to um, have this water detector hooked up to an auto sampler, which is going to be hooked up to a remote environmental monitor, which I'll show you in a second that's uh, in a tree behind the auto sampler. But uh, basically this is what we've got. And here's the auto sampler well above what we think is uh, bank full for this drainage. 
And then the remote environmental monitor is right above Sean's head in that tree over there. I'll get a closer shot of it right yeah. now. In this case, we're using a uh, cellular REM because we have cell phone reception in this location. So using cellular is a little bit cheaper than going the satellite route if you have coverage. Sean, go ahead and explain to me how this thing is currently going to get wired up between the REM and the, and the auto sampler and the, um, the sensor in the wash. Okay, so coming off of the auto sampler, we have the blue wire, which is its ground, this green wire, which is uh, the signal for when the program is all complete, and the brown wire, or the black wire, sorry, for when we uh, want to trigger the auto sampler. So these three are fed into our REM, and then these three wires are coming from our switch. So we have the power wire red, the ground wire white, and then the program or the uh, signal wire green. Okay. So this feeds into our REM. Okay. The REM will uh, read the switch when it gets wet. It will, in turn, um, tell the auto sampler to trigger and take samples. And then once that is all complete, the auto sampler will tell us that it is finished with this green wire right here. So it's going to send a signal back to the REM that's going to um, that's going to notify us that, that the program is done. Is done, yeah. And then with this switch, we're able to tell right when the program starts because we're the ones starting it with these two wires. Oh, perfect. And then uh, we're, this is actually designed for use with, uh, these are Hawk auto samplers, is that right? Yes, that's correct, the okay. uh, AS950 Hawk. Okay, but we can, we, you know, this can easily be hacked to work with ISCO auto samplers mm -hmm. or anything else. Okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's our uh, conduit with the wire that we just described, and we're using some of this, what do you call this stuff? Uh, rodent proofing. Rodent yeah. proofing. Yeah. yeah. Proofing. Usually keeps the critters Candid. from chewing on the. Right, and we have to. We have. And, and we're using this because we didn't have enough conduit, and frankly, it's a little bit easier feeding the uh, the wiring through this uh, rat proof uh, material. Um, trying to get all that wire through this three quarter inch uh, conduit is a little bit difficult, but we do need conduit because uh, we want to make a watertight fitting with the uh, bottom of the REM. Uh, so this looks like a good alternative for us and then for the last few feet just put it into conduit with a zip tie right there so that we can take advantage of the uh, of the watertight fitting on the bottom of the REM right there. Uh, Sean is just mentioning that uh, in order to make a nice watertight uh, seal on this that we can run some uh, we can run some caulking uh, right where that uh, where that zip tie is, where the uh, rodent proof uh, material meets the uh, conduit. Okay, so for this site, we're using 3 8 inch uh, inner diameter uh, clear plastic vinyl. And uh, for the auto sampler, we're gonna have to tell it the length of the tubing. And in this case, the length of the tubing to the auto sampler is 21.7 feet. Okay, so I'm down in the channel, and what we're gonna do is actually test this little sensor out. And I'm going to use that little cup of water to see if I can uh, if I can trigger that auto sampler. And Sean is up there as well to see what the voltage on the interrupt pin um, is reporting when I get this thing wet. Okay, Sean, what's the voltage on the interrupt pin? So the voltage right now is 0.08. So Sean is telling me that the voltage on the interrupt pin, which is going to trigger that auto sampler, is 0.08. Sorry, sorry. 0.01. 0 0.01 and we're we're playing with a with a three volt um, system we're, we're uh, using Adafruit's uh, phone of feather so here we go we're gonna get it wet okay Sean what's the voltage now 1.3 1 1.3 so we should have a rising limb on that interrupt pin which should trigger the auto sampler all right let's see so in about just a few seconds, I should hear that auto sampler go off. And I'm going to go up there. There it goes. Man, that was like 15 seconds. And that was about 15 seconds to trigger it. So that was quick. And now what we need to do, Sean, is check uh, ThingSpeak, right, to see if we got a flow reported. It says posting. Post good, phone off. All right. It just posted to the internet. It's done after that. It, so it's posted to the internet and the phone is going to sleep. So it looks like this thing is working. So we should be good to go. Second. All right, I'm good. 
Okay, Sean's good. The auto sampler's reset. Uh, Kyle is timing it. I'm gonna get this thing wet. Yep, we're good. Okay, Sh Sean's detected flow. I'm gonna go up here, see if I can record this thing actually pulling a sample. And it can take between 15 and seconds and about a minute. Saw a light go on. Yeah. So 30 seconds. Took about 30 seconds. Yeah. So we're good. All it right. Just, you know, that's not bad when you're telling it to do it immediately. Yeah. Okay, so Kyle's going to um, reprogram the auto sampler. We're going to have it wait one minute, we said, right? Uh, yeah. One minute before it uh, it starts sampling, and then it'll take pull a sample every 10 minutes thereafter. Mm -hmm. And each sample will be discretized into a one liter bottle that's lined with a polypropylene bag. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. What we're gonna do is uh, cock up this line wherever we wherever the uh, the insulation or the conduit is uh, is connected. Make sure to make this nice and watertight. Then we're gonna bury it in about four inches of soil so we don't have any cattle tripping over it. And I think we're good. So this is what's slowing us down right now, is having to make the connections between the auto sampler, the uh, switch in the channel, and the REM. Uh, this is just uh, kind of painful to do. It just takes a lot of time and it doesn't, these wires don't crimp together very well with those, with those joiners. So um, we do have a little field soldering kit, but the uh, issue is, is that the battery uh, runs out really quick. We get maybe one or two solders out of it. So we're gonna have Thank to you. figure something else out to make this go a little quicker. I think what we're gonna do next time is we're gonna use a PVC teeth fitting, which will allow us to uh, better hang that sampler tubing at the elevation that we're interested in relative to the uh, to the trigger and that's also um, going to help us avoid having this thing get moved and have it end up uh, sucking up dirt out of the channel.